What's up, everybody? Welcome to a very special episode of Rock Talk Live. Uh, we're all dressed up. I have a tie on. This guy has a tie on. This is uh, Ian Desmond, the newest Colorado Rocky. Say what's up to the people. What's up, guys? Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. All right, so we, we were able to secure a couple minutes of Ian's time today, and we have three different phones today to reach as many of you guys as we can. So we have Facebook on this one, Periscope Twitter over here, and Instagram Live for the very first time at the top. So we're just going to dive right into it, mm -hmm. get after some questions. Uh, so the first one coming for me, this is such a big day. We're excited to add you to the Rockies family. What was it about this club, about this city, this fan base, uh, this organization that really drew you to make, uh, make you want to be a Rocky? I think there's just a lot to believe in here. Um, an unbelievable group of uh, you know, young talent um, mixed with some really good veteran guys. Um, above that, you know, there's an unbelievable opportunity to, to win over the city here. Um, a great you know fan base that is probably a little frustrated that I think we can, we can uh, you know put some life back into um, and just overall just an unbelievable place to live no doubt no doubt so I'm looking at your shoes here and you don't have any socks on yeah, no socks, no socks? Yeah. dress no shoes socks. no socks yeah, always interesting yeah, all right we'll, we'll, we'll let it go for there yeah. um, usually no tie either but this is a special occasion very special uh, so you you were the number 20 you have for years um, why number 20? Why is it so special to you? And uh, obviously you're going to be 20 here as well. Um, you know, after a couple of years in the big leagues, uh, being number six, I kind of felt like I was established enough to, to pick my own number and going through the process of, you know, how do, we, how do you pick a number that you care about? Um, and, you know, young, uh, as a youngster in the you know, Nationals organization, Frank Robinson was there. Right. Um, he's obviously a groundbreaker in, in a lot of things and someone who's special to me. He's taught me a lot along the way, and uh, you know, just if you were gonna pick a number, you, you know, I just kind of felt like you should pick one that for somebody that you look up to, and then I certainly look up to Frank. No doubt, teed you up for that story. I knew where you, I knew the Thank answer. Um, but a little side story. So we about a month ago to the day almost, we had a, a press conference for Bud Black. Mm -hmm. So he was gonna be number twenty. Yeah. So what was the side conversation with uh, the skipper allowing you to wear that number? And, and uh, Buddy will be number ten now. Yeah. FYI for all the people out there. No, he. He reached out to me. I was fully prepared to pick another number, um, and you know, just for the simple fact, I don't want, I didn't want to try to even ask for the manager's number, but you know, he offered it. I, you know, reluctantly took it. He said that was his first act as manager to force me to take number twenty. So I didn't really there have much go. option there. Hey, we'll take it then. Uh, one thing you talked about a little bit today, a couple different times, was um, your brother-in-law, mm -hmm. Josh Renicky. He was a Rocky. Had some really good season 2011 2012 so he's married to your sister Nikki um, talk about some of the advice he gave you along the way just touching base with him what did he say about the city this club and and how influential was he in your decision to, to become a Rocky you know to be honest you know like they they love their time here uh, always spoke very highly of you know everyone here the organization the city um, but you know through this process this offseason specifically you know this is something that you know the organization and I wanted to work you know we wanted it to work out, so we, we did both both parties did a, a really good job of keeping it under wraps. So For sure. Josh didn't find out that I signed here until everyone else found out that I signed here. So it was kind of we kind of had a, a hat on it, but you know, the, just we don't need to be convinced. You know, we love it here. We're excited to see what the future has here, and uh, you know, there's really nothing that anybody could have said that would have changed our minds. Exactly. Um, anybody who follows you on social media or keeps up with the things that you do, um, neurofibromatosis, hashtag end NF, is a huge cause for you and your family. Uh, if you could just explain to people what, what neurofibromatosis is, why that's so important to you, and ways that they can get involved and, and make a difference with this. Yeah. So, you know, a few years back, um, I had just started a Twitter account. Didn't really know what was going on on Twitter. I still don't know, and that's my job. <laughs> I've actually followed, I, I followed some of your tweets. You're pretty funny on there. Thank you. Um, but I can retire now, everybody. <laughs> uh, so I'm uh, a young kid named Ethan Brown, uh, who's, who's a close friend of mine now, um, was, was looking for some prayers on uh, Unashamed Athletes. It's a Christian Twitter handle. Um, and, you know, I didn't know what to do, so I just, you know, hit him back and said, hey, you know, I'll be praying for you, buddy. Uh, we ended up talking. Come to find out, you know, he had neurofibromatosis. At the time, I had no idea yeah. what that was. I think a lot of people don't really know what it is, but it's it's way more common than what uh, what we think. Um, 
it's a genetic disorder that uh, just attacks your body, um, and you know, without going too deep, it's it's incurable. Uh, they don't have it's a mystery. You know, they don't have a cure for it, and uh, it's something that you know me, along with you know a lot of fans that support me, are, are trying to make an impact. You know, the Children's Tumor Foundation and. That's something that you know I will be a part of here, and uh, I hope that you know all you guys will will research it, follow along, you know, and and be a part of it and, and make a difference in that community. And we're happy to support you in ever whatever ways we can. So I'm excited to work with you with that kind of with that kind of thing as well. So uh, you have more important things to do, but we're going to end with some fun questions here at the end. Um, so you're from Sarasota. You still live there, right? Mm -hmm. In the off season. So the Flying Willendas. Do you know who they are? It's this old school yeah, for a hundred yeah. years, like tight roping, yeah. balance beam people. So Nick Willinda still lives there. They're from yeah. Sarasota. Anyway, that's the time. So I want to know which of these would you find the most terrifying, the last thing you'd want to do? Okay. Tight rope walking, knowing that if you fell, you wouldn't die. Uh, skydiving or bungee jumping? Do I get to know that I wouldn't die on the other two? Yeah, exactly. Uh, You're going to live regardless. Uh, but. Well, I mean, sign me up for any of them. <laughs> really? Uh, tight rope walking would probably be the, the, the most thrilling I guess you would say that'd be crazy yeah. all right we'll take that tightrope walker it's probably in your contract that you can't do that so we won't maybe when you retire 10 we years we might have now. time to get that adjusted all right we'll see we'll see all right so Nick Willenda if you're looking find this guy we'll do a little tight roping uh without our lives in danger though all right uh so we're approaching the holiday season I want to go back through the last three holidays that we've had October November and upcoming here in December um what Halloween costume did you wear this year I didn't. I didn't dress up. Never been much of a Halloween guy, but you know, I was there supporting my kids. Okay. And, uh, you know, not not much of a Halloween. All right. So, um, so Thanksgiving is uh, the November holiday. What is the best part of a Thanksgiving meal? Traditional Thanksgiving meal. The dark meat. Me too. Yeah, man, I love the drumstick. Yeah. All right, I'm the same. All right, we are in December now, of course. Uh, so the first question is, what's your favorite Christmas movie? So you have Elf, you have, I would consider Home Alone. Home Alone, Home uh, Alone, I'll say Home Alone. I'm yeah. a terrible movie guy. Like, we don't watch movies. We can't, none, none of us in my family can really sit still for more than two hours. So we're watching movies. <laughs> Especially those out. three little cute little kids you have. What's your favorite uh, kid show that you watch with your kids, TV? Ooh, that's tough. I'm a cartoon guy, so, yeah. you know, we got PJ Masks. Uh -huh. I like the Bernstein Bears. Yeah, that's good. Good lessons um, to be learned in that one. Yeah, it's really good, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, Doc McStuffins, you know, kind of hit a little skid there, but Doc, Doc was, I was, I was down with Doc. Um, My kids are the same age, so I, this is, we're yeah. speaking the same language. Um, <laughs> the Flugels, I think it's called. Flugels are pretty cool. Um, I mean, I could watch any of them. No movies, just a lot of I, kids I don't shows. like Caillou. Oh, Caillou's me a whiny me, little. Yeah, oh, man, me and Caillou good. got beef. <laughs> that guy's the worst. We actually banned our kids yeah, from watching Caillou because they started we, repeating the whininess, and I'm like, yeah, we, stop we whining, it. stop we whining. Um, that was quite a tangent. Yeah. Uh, last one. It, as a kid, what's the most memorable or famous, not famous, but most memorable Christmas present that you had? And it's something that you opened up on Christmas morning uh, or a gift that you've given that you saw your kids. Oh, my goodness, that's so cool. Anything that, that comes to mind when you opened it up on Christmas morning? I mean, the first one that came to mind, I'll say, is a, a trampoline. Um, you know, all me and my sister, me and my brothers and sisters, um, wanted a trampoline so bad. And, you know, we didn't get it. You know, the parents did like the, you know, the hide it outside type deal. Yeah, yeah. Like we're, we were all like disappointed. And then all of a sudden they said, hey, come outside. We got something to show you. There's a big, huge trampoline out there. And we all jumped for hours. And That's where you get your ups, athleticism. Uh, you do guess, flips yeah. on that thing. Right. All right. Cool. Um, so we're going to sign off here with uh, with an autographed baseball cap. This might be the first thing you're going to autograph as a Rocky. Yeah, it I'm is. not sure if it is or it not. Is. But we are going to. my contract. Yeah, well, exactly. That one's more important. But we're going to give this away. So if you sign that, we'll give it away on Twitter uh, because Twitter is best for rules and all that stuff, whatever. So we'll give this away on Twitter over the next couple days. The very first autographed item from Indo. Perfect. Thank you very much. The last is. thing I want to do, I noticed, I noticed throughout the day a lot of your new teammates have been uh, – liking our stuff. Otto was on Instagram, like double tapping. How about you just say something to our guys? Because I know these guys are watching out here. All right, uh, just really excited to, to be part of your guys' team, uh, get to know you, and, and uh, go to battle with you. Really looking forward to it. All right, let's do it. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Ian Desmond, we're excited to have him as a Rocky. We'll do this again sometime. Hope, hopefully you enjoyed it. Yeah. All right, yeah. peace out.